Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about how to model a ring. So, what am I talking about when I talk about a ring? I'm talking about jewelry. I'm talking about some just basic band type geometry. We get a lot of questions, requests to model specific things. Some of these things are enormous aircraft carriers, um, various planes, vehicles, trucks. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Keep it coming. Um, a lot of these things are big. They'd be difficult, like days of modeling, weeks of modeling to actually get done. So let's kind of fall off one end. On the other hand, we get some things which are fairly basic, quick, easy to see how they work uh, models. In those cases, we do want to make videos of that. So this is a question that's actually come up a couple times is show me how to model a ring. Um, I don't know exactly. That's that's the whole question. That's the whole request. So not details in there about, you know, is there fancy things. So I figured we'd start with simple, simple modeling. We're going to go through and look how to model something like my wedding band. Uh, we're going to actually do that right now. All right. So I'm not going to go through the process of, you know, on camera, taking my band off my fingers and measuring this with calipers. I did that off camera and I just have a couple of numbers here. So the inside of my ring is 18 millimeters. The outside of my ring is about 20 millimeters. So it's about two millimeters wide. And then I just got a little cross section of the shape here. It's about seven millimeters tall and it kind of has this, you know, slopes like that. And then it's almost a flat spot of about a millimeter on either end. So it kind of, kind of slopes up a little bit and then slopes. So, kind of a, a D shape that we want to make. So I want to make all this. So first things first, I want to model this in the mil in the, the values that are here. So it's in millimeters. I'm not going to actually model in millimeters. Several of you have mentioned this or mentioned this in videos before. SketchUp was made to model architectural models. So it really works best when we're working at like house size objects. We can go smaller, of course, but something real small, we're going to get a lot of detail in. I'm going to want to go to uh, model at a larger scale and then shrink down for output. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go pull up my model info. I'm going to go into my units and I want to model everything in meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to one for one meet everything. So 18 millimeters is going to be modeled as 18 meters. And then I can just take the th final thing and scale it down. So a couple questions here. Learning aside, this is going to be a nice learning process of figuring out how to create this exact geometry. But why would I model something like this? I'm, I want to model this, not like why would I model it, but what's my purpose? I want to model this in such a way that maybe I could build off this and create a cast for, you know, like a 3D printing model where I could take it, maybe print it out of wax and then cast it in metal, um, something along those lines. That's what I'm looking to do here. I want to get enough detail that if I was to make this into a real thing in the real world, it would work. It would look nice and smooth. I don't want to be heavy facets, so I'm going to be real high on my poly count, but to get out a good looking ring model. So let's do that. So first thing, I'm going to take my image and I'm just going to move it off to the side a little bit. Um, I'm going to do, say goodbye to Teddy. We don't need Teddy right now. And the reason I'm doing that is anytime I work off of something circular, if I can, I like to work off the origin. Because when I look at this ring, the center here, the middle, this is going to be negative space, right? So I don't have a point that I can use as reference. Like if I was modeling a square, I like to grab a lower left corner and put that at the origin. In the case of a circle, if I can align it to the middle, that's, that's the easiest for me. So when I grab, come up here, I'm going to grab my circle and I'm going to go to the very middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out um, half of this inside space dimension. So it's, it says 18. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out, uh, nine meters. Um, before I do that though, well, let's, let's, let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna do it nine enter. And there we go. Um, I kind of lost my image there, my picture, where'd it go? Let's scoot that over even more. Let's just stick it right here. There's not that many dimensions on here, but let's go to pull it out again. So nine, enter, and there we go. That's nine meters. So now you can tell if, if I was to take this, say I was to send this to 3D print or something like that, 
I have this very faceted look, right? Um, it's possible on the outside, maybe that's a cool look for the outside of my ring and I want that. For the inside, I probably want it nice and smooth. So if I pull my entity info, it's 24 edges right now. So generally speaking, I try to work in increments of 12. So a low poly circle would be 12, something where I don't care, it's just for visualizations, 24. But if I'm outputting a circle that's gonna be printed, I usually jump to 48, or in this case, I'm gonna to go to 96 sides. And you can see that's a much smoother circle. If I zoom way in here, I can still eventually see the facets, but for my purposes, shrunk down to you know less than 20 millimeters, that's gonna work just fine. Speaking of 20 millimeters, um, I could have set that first too. When I come in a circle initially, before I type anything else, I can just tell it I want 96 sides and I could draw it. That was for illustrative purposes, I did that that way. All right, so if I look in here, my exterior, my width of the wall is 20. I'm not gonna do that here. So what this is, what this piece right here is, this is my path that I'm gonna use for follow me. To actually put the geometry in, I'm gonna just make this shape sitting on the outside of my, my path. So my overall height of the wall of my ring, so this is just a cross section like right through here, is seven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right here, I'm gonna go up 3.5, the overall width of the wall is two. So from here, I'm just gonna come over two, come back down seven. And then I can actually use inferencing to just hold down shift and snap to there, to there. All right, so if I was to trace this around, if I used follow me and said trace a circle, I'd have real basic ring shape. That would work out awesome. So in my ring, this first, uh, one, so half of this, this is, this is two, this is one millimeter to here, one millimeter to here. The second millimeter from here down to here is one great arc. So I'm gonna do, it's, it's a great arc. I don't know why I said that that way, but it is, it's really something. All right, so I'm just gonna come down there to middle to middle and pull it out to the front there. So again, same thing here. This arc is six segments. So the whole, the whole thing was 12. I might bump that up. Maybe I'd say like that's 12. Give me a little bit more, a little more smoothness. This is gonna create a lot of geometry, but again, the interest here is like I'm creating a hero prop. This is a thing that is going to, you know, look awesome by itself. This maybe is something that's gonna get rendered or like I said, output for 3D printing. All right, over here, um, I'm going to create another arc. I'm trying to figure out exactly how far down I wanna put it. Uh, this part is a little, real small, I couldn't, pull a caliper on this thing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down 0.5, and then from that point, I'm gonna draw another arc from here, straight across to where it intersects this previous arc, and then pull that up. So that wasn't quite right, it'd be a little higher to get tangent, tangential. So let's try going up 0.1 millimeter, and then I'll draw another arc from that point, which is Oh, I said point one millimeter. Undo, undo. I, I faked myself out there. All right, point one. Enter. There we go. So now I'll draw from there to where it meets there. Yeah, that is that is good enough. I'm happy with that. All right, so then I'm going to take this shape right here. I want to get that exact same shape on the bottom. So I'm going to grab that little chunk, just the chunk that's going to get cut off right here. And I'm going to say mirror that. My modifier key to copy, grab blue, trace it down here, boom, like that. And then I'm going to erase these extra edges. And that is a pretty good looking profile for my ring. All right, last step here, um, just to make this easier, I'm gonna get rid of the surface because all I need is this ring. I don't actually need the face in there. Uh, I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna go to tools and say, follow me. And then just click this shape. And there we go, get rid of this on the inside. That is a very good representation of what my ring looks like. Awesome. Last thing, I'm gonna triple click. So you can see how many faces are in here. Like I said, this is gonna be nice and smooth when I 3D print it. It's gonna look, look perfect. That's gonna look awesome. This is too much if I was, I mean, if this was supposed to be, I don't know, the 
the end of a turbine is what's coming to mind, something like that. It's a lot of geometry. I wouldn't want to do this for a full size model, uh, especially if this is repeating, but for this being a hero prop makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a component. Let's call my ring. Now I'm just going to take it, make a copy over here. There's the full height, full size one. Now I want to go from meters to millimeters. So I'm going to go scale, start dragging it down one corner to the opposite corner. So it's a uniform rescaling and say 0 0.001 enter. Uh, I'll lose that. Where'd it go? Oh, it's tiny. There we go. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. There we go. All right. So with that, I can right hit. If I hit scale definition, that's going to set it so it's not a scaled version now. That's the actual size that it is. And this is this the file I would want to use to export this to 3D print because this is the proper size. This is what I want to actually, if I was to print this, it should fit on my finger just like my current wedding ring does. And that would be it. So there we go. Quick and easy ring in SketchUp. So yeah, like I said, that was that was a request. And I know I went deep. I went like step by step and explained a lot of stuff. Um, realistically, it's probably a few minutes to get that modeled pretty quick and qu quick and easy with all that detail. Um, but hopefully those of you who asked, show me how to model a ring that works for you. If there's more specifics you had in there and some, you know, I mean, modeling jewelry can be a big deal. I talked about an aircraft carrier taking a lot of time to a real fancy, nice looking ring and that kind of thing that could, that could take some energy and some time. But uh, if there's a specifics you'd want to see in here, let me know about that. And if there's other things you think would be great to see modeled in, you know, whatever we have 10, 15 minutes here, let me know about that too, down in the comments below. If you haven't already, do give us a like down below if you like that. And please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week. You'd be notified of all of them if you subscribe. And like I said, most importantly, let us know in the comments what you think. Is there something else we should show? Is there something else, a specific thing we should model? Tell us in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.